Yum, yum! Hey, this is Ed Ferrari, and in this video, I'm going to show how we can use some of Moto's geometry constraints. And I'm also going to show uh, a script that's part of the Coolidge collection uh, to make it easier to use uh, geometry constraints in Moto. Uh, so here I have this circular plane, uh, and it's already set up as a soft body that collides with this uh, semi spherical dome. Uh, which is a rigid body. Uh, so when I run the simulation, uh, we get this sort of effect. Uh, now, I also have this box here, and I want this box to uh, sort of be constrained to an element of this uh, circular plane. So the standard way to do this in Modo is to come over uh, to the setup uh, tab here, or the setup uh, kind of work area, and in the constraints section, uh, we want to select uh, both of the items that are going to be a part of the constraint. And in the geometry area here, we have uh, all the different uh, options. We have uh, three uh, position constraints and three uh, normal constraints. Uh, so let's say we want to constrain this uh, little reddish box to, uh, let's say, this polygon here. Uh, now. If I were to just select both of these in items mode, which is the standard way to uh, set this up in Moto, and then choose poly position, uh, you can see the little red box actually gets uh, constrained to uh, this polygon uh, right here that's part of the circular plane. Uh, and if I run this, the simulation, or if I play the animation back, uh, you can see it's doing exactly what it's supposed to be doing, but that wasn't what I initially wanted to do. I initially wanted uh, this red box to be constrained to, let's say, this polygon. Now, I can see that this polygon, I can see the index. Uh, it's very hard to see, but if I kind of angle my camera this way, uh, the number 163 is uh, is displayed here. And if I select another polygon, I can see this is uh, number 154. So each polygon has a, a specific uh, uh, identifying uh, kind of label. Uh, the, the way you get to see this is if you press O in the 3D viewport to bring up the 3D viewport properties and then in the active meshes side tab uh, you have to make sure that show indices is enabled and this will just show the, uh, the polygon index or the vert index. So if I press 1 to go into vert mode and I select this vert you can see it's vert 187. Um, so when dealing with the geometry constraints in Moto's uh, standard workflow uh, you really need to know the uh, the element um, index. So we wanted, I believe, to uh, constrain this uh, box to this polygon. Uh, also, another way to, to discover the, uh, the indices is if you don't have uh, show indices enabled, you can always uh, select the element, in this case, this polygon, and then in the stats um, tab, uh, make sure you're not in statistics, but in info. Uh, you can always see the polygon uh, ID right here. So this is 163, this is 152, this polygon is number 8, and this is 164. So once I know the uh, the actual uh, polygon index, I can actually uh, select the child item of the box, which is what's being constrained, uh, so that I can see the polygon position. Uh, this is what was created when we actually clicked on poly position here in the geometry constraints section. And then in the properties of this, index A, I can just set that to whatever uh, polygon I want. And I've already, honestly, I've already forgotten which one. And this is kind of like the weakness of this of this workflow. Uh, so it's 163. Uh, so I'll just change this from 16 to 163. And then when I press enter, uh, you can see the, the box is now uh, aligned to that polygon. So now when I scrub to zero and play, we can see that the box is actually constrained to that, that specific polygon that we want, which is polygon 163. Uh, we can also uh, select the box and then select the plane, and we can do polynormal, and this will just constrain the normal. So now when I scrub back and press play, uh, the cube is aligned uh, along the normal of the polygon as well. So the polygon uh, normal actually inherited the uh, the correct index. 
So that's nice. But there's an easier way to do this, uh, and it's using a script that's part of the Coolidge collection. Um, and actually, before I do that, let me show the edge uh, constraint, because that'll even further reinforce why I like using the Coolidge collection script for this sort of thing. Uh, so let me just revert my scene, and let's set up a uh, an edge constraint. So it's a very similar process. So let's say I want to constrain this little red cube to, let's say, this, uh, this edge right here. Uh, so I can see that uh, I have two indexes or indices, so I have 6 and 175, so I could remember those. Uh, I could also come over to stats in the info. I can see I have 6 and 175 selected. And again, a different edge will be two different configurations. This is 176 and 182. Um, but we want to work with 6 and 175. So doing this the classic moto way, we'll select the, uh, the box along with the uh, circular plane, and then I'll come over to edge position, and it doesn't appear that anything happened, but if I hit play, I can see that the cube is constrained to this vert right there at the top. But if I want it to be on, like I mentioned, uh, 6 and 175, this edge right here, I can open up the uh, box edge position uh, constraint, and in properties I can change index A and B. So this is 6, and this one will be 175 and now it's constrained correctly. Now you might wonder why the box looks like it's constrained to uh, vertex, uh, this vertex uh, with an index of six. That has to do with the edge percentage. This is random sometimes, um, so you really don't want it to be 0%, you probably don't want it to be 100%, which would be uh, this vert. You usually want it to be 50% so that it's at the center of the edge, you know, between these two verts. Um, it is nice how you can kind of uh, change the percentage. You might want to animate that uh, for some reason, so that is nice to have that feature, but I think by default it should be 50%. Um, so that's kind of further evidence for using um, you know, the, the technique that I'm about to show, uh, which is the script in the Coolidge collection. Uh, similarly, if you want to run an edge normal constraint, uh, you would just select the box, shift select the uh, circular plane, and then choose edge normal. Um, and now when I play back the animation or the simulation, uh, the little cube is attached perfectly uh, on the center of the edge that we wanted. Now if we want to change the, uh, the edge really quickly, um, doing it the Moto standard method, uh, we'd have to select the edge here, and now I can see that this is 176 and 182, so I'd have to come back to the position plane and I would have to do 176 and 182, and then I'd have to do the same thing for the normal uh, constraint. So what was that, 176 and 182, 176, 182, there we go. So anytime I want to change uh, the edge, I would have to copy those uh, those numbers, I'd have to re uh, reapply those indexes. But again, if I play the simulation, uh, we can see what's happening here. Okay, so let me revert this and let's try the Coolidge collection uh, method. So here we go. And um, before I get started, uh, let me just show you the web page where we uh, get the Coolidge collection. So here's here it is on Pushing Points. That's William Vaughn's website. And then there's a little uh, link to his Gumroad page. And this link will be in the description, but it's definitely worth uh, checking out. So I have the Coolidge Collection options uh, assigned to uh, this little uh, expandable form here. So I can just scroll through all of the different scripts. Um, I'll show how to do that in a second. If you just click on the scripts, uh, you can also get to it uh, by clicking on the little C. And here's all of the Coolidge uh, scripts here. Uh, I just think it's better if it's uh, if it's docked to its own little dedicated area. Um, to do that, I'll just show you how to do it with um, another window. So if I click the little plus button, right now uh, custom form B is uh, is hidden. If I just click that uh, or change it to expanded, and then I open B, and then I click this little tiny arrow here in the top right corner, and then I choose form view, and then I right click where it says form view, and then where it says exports, I click on that. And I can just type in uh, cool for Coolidge and just 
uh, click on that. And now I have it uh, docked so that I can always just get to it very quickly um, by clicking on the little icon up here. Okay, so let's do a polygon position constraint first, the Coolidge way. Uh, this is a little bit of a different uh, workflow. It's kind of uh, thinking in reverse, but the nice thing is that it's uh, it's almost a one-click solution. So I'll select the uh, the element that I want to constrain to. So in this case, let's just try uh, this polygon here. And then I'll control click on the element that I want to be constrained. So in the items list, I'll hold control and click on the box. And then in the Coolidge collection window, I'll just scroll down to utilities and where it says quick geo position constraint, I'll just click that. And now if I press play, uh, everything is working. So I, know I didn't even have to uh, worry about the uh, the index or anything like that. You just select the uh, the element. So it's a much faster way, uh, in my opinion, than using the geometry constraints uh, here in the constraints side tab. Uh, similarly, if I just want to uh, do a uh, normal constraint, uh, I would just again select the element and then hold Control in the items list and select the uh, item that I want to be constrained, and then where it says quick geo position constraint, which is what we uh, chose earlier. If I hold alt, you can see it changes to quick geo normal constraint. So I do that. And then when I play the animation back, um, the constrained element is aligned to the uh, underlying surfaces normal. So that's nice to have. Uh, let me just revert the scene again and we'll do a quick vert uh, constraint with the Coolidge collection. So similarly, this time, instead of uh, selecting uh, a polygon, I can just select a vert. So I'll select a vert. Let's say we want this one, uh, which is vert 35. Again, using the Coolidge collection, we don't even really need to pay attention to the index uh, for a vert constraint. And then holding control, I'll click on the box, and then I'll come down to quick geo position constraint in the Coolidge collection scripts, and I'll just click that. Oh, it says we must have two items selected, so I forgot to have the plane selected. There we go. So let's see, we'll just do... Where was that 35? We'll just do, you know, we'll pick a different one. We'll do this one. Uh, this looks like 138. So I'll hold control, click the box. There we go. I clicked quick uh, position constraint and then we're, we're all set. There we go. So if I want to change this to a different uh, index, I can just uh, select this uh, let's say 126, and right below quick geo position constraint, I can do copy index A, and then in the vertex position constraint underneath the box, I can just paste that control V into that uh, text input field, and that's how you change uh, the uh, the index. Um, so I can do the same thing by uh, adding a uh, normal constraint. So with the plane selected, I'll select this vert. I'll hold in control, I'll select the box. Hold alt so that we change quick geo position constraint to quick geo normal constraint. And now that little cube is constrained along the position and the normal. So I'll, I'll click play and that's the result. There we go. Okay, so let me revert this one more time and I'll show the edge method. So revert and uh, let's say I want to do this edge right here, which is 204 to 35. Again, we shouldn't really need to know this. So uh, I'll select this edge with the plane item selected, and then I'll hold control and click the box. And then again, I'll do quick geo position constraint. And what's nice about this is I didn't need to know the indexes. It was only one button. It was this quick geo position constraint button that I needed to click. And if I come over to the edge position plane, the edge percentage is automatically set to 50%. Now we can change that, but it's just one less step that we have to worry about. And similarly, if I want this uh, box to be constrained along the edge, if I want the normal to be constrained, I can just again, select the plane, select the, the edge that's associated with the plane, control click on the box, and then holding alt, I can, I can click on quick geo normal constraint. And there we go. So now when I press play, we get this sort of effect. Okay. So one final thing is um, 
if you want to change the edge now uh, to let's say this edge, uh, let's say I want to change the position to that, I can do it manually or I can use this little copy index A and if I hold alt, copy index A turns into copy index B. So for an edge constraint like we saw previously with the uh, standard Moto constraints, um, you have two indexes here in the uh, edge position and edge normal constraint properties. So I can either manually type in 195 and 208, or I can select this edge and let's make sure I'm in the plane item, and I can copy index A, and then just paste that, control V and copy index A, and then I can uh, make sure the plane is selected, and I can hold alt and copy index B, and paste that here, so 208 and 195. Or I can just remember the numbers 208 and 195, and I can just do 208 and 195. So again, when I hit play, uh, it'll constrain to that edge. So it's a little bit of a, a quicker way uh, to set up um, element constraints, whether it's a vert, poly, or edge. You just use this one button uh, and the contextual alternative by holding Alt. Uh, but it's the same button, quick geo normal constraint and quick geo position constraint. So again, uh, if you go to uh, the Pushing Points Coolidge Collection page on uh, William Vaughn's website, uh, it'll take you to a link to the Gumroad page, and it's definitely worth checking out. It definitely makes things a lot easier. Okay, thanks for watching. Yum, yum!